Good day, everyone. I will be talking about the intellectual revolution that defines society, which is the Freudian revolution. Learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the student will be able to explain how intellectual revolution changed the way how humans see the world. Identify Sigmund Freud's contributions. Discuss about psychoanalysis. And identify the psychosexual development stages. Before we go farther with the topic, let's get to know Sigmund Freud first. So who is Sigmund Freud? Freud is an Austrian neurologist who was born in 1856 and died in 1939 in Freiburg, Moravia. He is known as the father of psychoanalysis. And aside from that, he is also best known for the psychosexual development theory. In addition, he established a set of talk therapy-based therapeutic approaches that included concepts like transference, free association, and dream interpretation. His theories at work helped shape our views of childhood, personality, memory, sexuality, and therapy. Freud is also credited for initiating a 20th century intellectual revolution named after him, the Freudian Revolution. In the Freudian intellectual revolution, Sigmund Freud believed that insanity is caused by a psychological condition, not by physical factors. But the problem is that no one believed him. As a result, more people thought that if someone was not in the right mind, they were suffering from mental illness, whereas those who are not insane were physically well. So it means that people directly judge people if they see an individual who is not in the right minds instead of checking up on them deeper if what is really going on. All of this changed when he invented the psychoanalytic theory of personality or also known as psychoanalysis. His theory became famous and because of this, Psychologists and psychiatrists began to look into the psychological and early childhood traumas that lead to insanity. He popularized and argued that personality is a product of three conflicting elements, and these are id, ego, and the superego. First, let's talk about psychoanalysis. The psychoanalytic theory of personality development was proposed by Sigmund Freud, who claimed that personality is produced through conflicts between three fundamental elements of the human mind, the id, ego, and the superego. According to Freudian philosophy, the human mind is divided into two parts, conscious and unconscious. All of the things we are aware of or can readily bring into awareness are included in the conscious mind. Psychoanalytic therapy's fundamental purpose is to bring unconscious materials into consciousness and improve ego functioning, allowing the individual to become less governed by biological drives or super-ego demands. Now, we know that psychoanalysis strikes at the core of the Freudian revolution. But what is psychoanalysis exactly? Psychoanalysis is a therapeutic method for studying psychic phenomena and treating emotional illnesses in which the patient is encouraged to discuss freely about personal experiences, particularly early childhood and dreams, during treatment sessions. The concept that everyone has unconscious thoughts, feelings, wants, and memories is the core of psychoanalysis. The goal of psychoanalytic therapy is to make the unconscious conscious by releasing repressed emotional experiences. Here are the three psychoanalytic theory of Freud. First is the id. This is the earliest part of the personality to emerge. The id exists from birth and is driven by instinct, desire, and need. It is completely unconscious and includes the most basic biological desires and reflexes, 
as well as the most fundamental element of the personality. When the id's demands aren't addressed, conflict arises. Because all desires cannot be met immediately. Those needs may be met, at least temporarily, through primary process thinking in which the person fantasizes about what they want. The id personality would say, I want to do that now. Second is the ego. Its function is to absorb and cope with reality, keeping the id's impulses in balance and expressing them in socially appropriate ways. The ego is guided by the reality principle, which seeks to fulfill the desire of the id in most rational and realistic manner possible. The ego personality would say, maybe we could compromise, or maybe we can understand and settle it. The superego is the final part of the personality, emerging between the ages of 3 and 5, the phallic stage in Freud's stages of psychosexual development, which will be discussed afterwards. The superego is the personality's moral compass, maintaining a feeling of right and wrong. These ideals are first thought in children by their parents. The superego, on the other hand, grows with time, allowing children to accept moral ideals from people they admire, such as educators. The superego personality would say, it's not right to do that. Here is an example of a circumstance. I want to eat pizza, the id personality said, but the superego personality answered, I'm on a diet, so I can't. So these two are in competition with one another, and the ego personality is the one who will solve the problem. I'll just eat one slice of pizza to avoid a bad situation. Ego personality said. In other words, the ego tends to balance the id and the super ego. Now that we are done tackling the psychoanalysis theory, let's now proceed in exploring the psychosexual theory of Freud. Psychosexual development is a key component of Freudian psychology's psychoanalytic sexual drive theory. Freud believed that personality developed through a series of childhood stages in which pleasure-seeking energies from the id became focused on certain erogenous areas. These are the five stages of Freud's psychosexual development theory. First is the oral stage. This psychosexual stage of development begins as soon as the baby is born. The newborn relies extensively on the mother for oral stimulation and sustenance in the beginning. When the mother is present and routinely fulfills the child, the two develop a bond of trust. So during this stage, infants achieve gratification through oral activities such as feeding, thumb sucking, and bubbling. Second is the anal stage. The libido's emphasis shifts from the mouth to the anus and intestines area when a child progresses to the second stage of development. During this stage, parents may begin toilet training their children. This is considered the anal stage main struggle. Toilet training can be frustrating experience for parents, but how they handle the situation has a significant impact on their child. Toilet training, according to Freud, is so important since it is a child's first interaction with authority. Parents must inform their children about where and when they can defecate. If the child's bond is strained, he or she may not be able to finish this stage. The child enters the phallic phase after the anal phase. The erogenous zone advances to the genitals at this time. Masturbation gives the child pleasure. The phallic stage conflicts are among Freud's most controversial notions and not simply because they include a young child masturbating. As the child begins to recognize erotic attraction 
and the biological distinctions between men and women, the fundamental struggle in this period emerges. Fear and jealousy, two crucial emotions, develop in the child, resulting in the Oedipus complex or Electra complex. The Oedipus complex is a stage in the normal maturation process marked by a desire for sexual engagement with a parent of the opposite sex and a simultaneous sense of competition with the parent of the same sex, according to psychoanalytic theory. The female variant of the Oedipus complex is referred to as the Electra complex. It involves a young girl, age 3 to 6, developing an unconscious sexual attachment to her father while becoming progressively angry toward her mother. The next stage is the latent. Sexual development becomes inactive after a child reaches the age of 6. Remember that, according to Freud, the majority of a child's personality and psychosexual development occurs before they enter elementary school. During this period, the kid's super ego and ego continue to grow and the youngster learns to balance the id's impulses with reality and society's rules. The child's energy is directed away from the erogenous zones and toward outside activities. The most significant activities that these periods are habits, platonic connections, and learning. During this stage, children spend majority of their time building bonds with peers of the same gender genital stage is the last psychosexual development stage during puberty the libido awakens from its rest the erogenous zone has returned to the genitals but pleasure is derived from sources other than masturbation the formation of the super ego and ego is another difference between this stage and the phallic stage a young child's primary emphasis is on their own needs without these two areas. They are now concentrating on the needs of others. Sigmund Freud's psychosexual theory is notable for emphasizing the importance of early childhood experiences in the development of personality and as a factor in later behaviors. Many people believe that Freud's theory had no scientific basis as no empirical or experimental data could support it. Despite criticisms, Freud still continued to work on refining his theory and in fact tried to explain how psychoanalysis can be a clinical method in treating some mental orders. Soon enough, people were able to understand the concept of psychoanalysis which eventually resulted in classifying psychology as a science. Sigmund Freud had a lot of contributions and made a big impact on our society even until now. He changed the way we think about the treat mental illnesses, and he was the one who came up with the psychoanalytic theory of personality. Beyond that, he completely altered our perceptions of mankind, thought, and society. His thoughts and beliefs on the links that exist between the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the body and environment around us are still as well known today as they were when we originally proclaimed them at the turn of the 20th century. Freud has influenced people into two ways that are related but not the same. He established a theory of the human mind and behavior as well as a clinical procedure for assisting unhappy people at the same time. Freud's theory of the unconscious is perhaps his most important contribution to modern thought. Lastly, his theories contributed to the development of modern psychology. Most psychologists today, however, criticize those notions and question whether Freudian psychology is still relevant. However, Freud's theories had a huge influence and may still be seen in many current psychology developments. 
That's the end of the discussion about the Freudian intellectual revolution. Thank you for watching and listening. Have a good day, everyone.